This is Oren, and this is Monday morning in which I am recording this video, but still it's within a day of when I first started this project, because it was like late, it was like noon or something when I started yesterday from bed. Um, I am currently on a cooler in a car because me and my parents are going up to, uh, up north to visit my sister for Thanksgiving, and at any minute my parents, uh, probably impatient and trying to beat traffic, will probably barge in, but... You know, I've recorded this from a lot of crazy places, so I don't think we'll, we're going to keep going. I want to talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which I would call my favorite film of the year. Would that assume that I am a Quentin Tarantino diehard fan? Actually not. I miss, I did not watch most of his 90s films, except for Pulp Fiction, in a film course, and we saw it kind of, like, edited in different parts. Um, I like him from Inglorious Bastards and Django Unchained, but his 90s stuff sort of caught a following by people who didn't appreciate his influences and sort of latched onto the violence and hipness in a way that sort of turned me off. But we have to separate the man who also is extremely appreciative of other people's films, the man from the film from the the man from the film from his following and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a film that doesn't recall past Tarantino as much as it recalls I, I find it to be like a bit David Lynch or even Terrence Malick in its focus on mood. Um, the cinematography of the film recalls, I actually think it, it's a bit like Terminator Dark Fate, or Terminator, yeah, but Terminator Dark Fate I think is far better done, but the film recalls a little bit of the, open, of the kind of forlorn skies and the open spaces of the Old West. I think my dad is entering in the car now, so I guess he's gonna be interrupted by, I'm doing a video blog, and hopefully my dad will not make too much noise, because I am in the middle of broadcasting. How's it going, Father? I'm in the middle of a broadcast, so if you don't mind keeping it down while I'm keeping going. Anyway, so Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is the story of the uh, Tate murders, as well as a number of other goings-on in 1969, exactly 50 years ago. Um, uh, there was a man named George Spann once in a uh, while who, in the middle of the hippie movement, he lent his farm to some to a, a commune of hippies, who stayed on it, um, presumably in exchange for sexual favors, and, well, one of their things they did was murder a bunch of people. Uh, maybe this might not have made the news if one of the people they murdered wasn't an up-and-coming actress named Sharon Tate. Sharon Tate was married to Roman Polanski, he is a famous director, now he's known for his, uh, you could say a sexual crime. Um... In 1969, Roman Polanski just married, just made Rosemary's Baby, which was one of the biggest hits of the previous year, so he was an up-and-coming director. He was maybe considered New Hollywood, um, and, Leonardo, uh, and Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt play, play fictional characters in the middle of this. Some of the new forces in Hollywood, like uh, and some of the old forces, like the cowboy played by Timothy Oliphant, and the... Um, the uh, and Bruce Lee himself is in the film, played by Mike Mo. Um, the film has a lot of. It's a very great think thinky piece, and I absolutely love that. And I don't know, there are and it's one of those things where you can debate what it's about for a while, which I absolutely love. Um, for me, I like to equate it to generational change. Uh, I and it's related to things that are happening in Hollywood, but also things that are happening outside of Hollywood. For example, like steel industry, uh, a lot of the workers, their jobs get outsourced, and what do they do next? This is the same thing that happened to, I imagine, cowboys who settled the Old West, as depicted by cowboy movies. Um, a lot of early cowboy movies before, you could say, like, the late 60s with Butch Cassidy or Wild Bunch, a lot of early cowboy movies were had a paradox that the cowboys settled the Old West until the West was settled and then there was no place for them. And then, but the cowboy move, and then the, um, this also happened on a meta level, again, with the, um, transition from the actual cowboy TV shows from the 50s and 60s, when certain stars were in demand who could ride horses, to a certain different type of actor in the 70s, who, like Dustin Hoffman or Al Pacino, who are more method actor, more, you know, as well as, so... Both these, I think both these themes are explored in the character of Leonardo DiCaprio, who is of the old generation, and he has to figure out a new way to survive. You could say that Sharon Tate represents the younger generation. 
in the same way in a broader context in the 60s and 70s, and I'm not an expert on it, but I think most people know that there was like a hippie movement that was supplanting an older generation. And so generational theme, generational change happens a lot. Now, I actually watched the movie without knowing who, without knowing much about the Sharon Tate murders. Um, but I think anyone can sort of figure out that I, Sharon Tate did get murdered, and she doesn't get murdered in the movie. And I think that's thematic of, um, again, a rewriting of history to show that perhaps the ideal version of America was one where basically hippies and the older generation could coexist, which never happened, which never happened in real life, but that was, but, you know, it was sort of like a intertwining of values. I don't really know. Um, the film, again, I think one of its most controversial things is the violence that Quentin Tarantino revels in, and there's just an iota of that, and the question is whether, uh, whether that's overdone. I think the fact that it's only limited to two minutes of violence in a three-hour movie means that, you know, this is not a typical Quentin Tarantino film, and you have to admire directors who grow, who change, who who grow within their brand, and I think that's what this film does extraordinarily well. Um, you know, this is also a really interesting showcase for Brad Pitt, who I don't even think he's playing against a type, and Margot Robbie uh, sort of really shines. She doesn't have as much to do, um, and it, it has just a wide array of characters, and I think the portrayal of the, the, the cult, I can't remember their name, that killed Tate is extraordinary. Um, it really kind of just takes you on that moment in history. It's a film that is really worth a lot of discussion, and I would probably call it my favorite film of the year.